1993, John MacArthur preached a sermon titled, What's Wrong with America? A question that would be fitting even today. In the sermon, he focused on Romans chapter 1, where three times we're told the phrase, God gave them over. If you look at this passage, the Bible hammers home this phrase three times, saying in verse 24, Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Then in verse 26, Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Then in verse 28, So God gave them over to a depraved mind, so that they do what ought not to be done. He then said something powerful in his sermon, and I quote, There comes a point in God's dealing with men and nations, groups of people, when he abandons them, and the consequence of that abandonment is that they will eat the fruit of their own choices. If I were to simply answer the question, what's wrong with America, I would say God has abandoned America, and America is now feeding on its own choices. Chosen to sin, they have. Chosen to turn their back on God, they have. Chosen to reject the gospel, they have. Chosen to reject a biblical morality, they have chosen to disobey the clear commandment of God they have. And God says, let them alone. End quote. Now, when you look at society today, are people given over to the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity? Are people given over to shameful lusts? Are people in society, in general, living with a depraved mind, where they do what ought not to be done? Are we soon to be judged by the God of heaven? Have people strayed so far from the gospel, so far from truth, that God's judgment is imminent? The Amplified Translation of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says, But the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in later times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. The Bible also says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 to 13, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Look at the three things here that the Bible prophesies will happen. In later times, some will turn away from the faith. People will betray and hate each other. The love of most will grow cold. All of these aspects are heart issues. Love will grow cold. That is a heart issue. People will betray and hate each other. That is a heart issue. Some will turn away from the faith. That is a heart issue. So from all of this, we can conclude that in the last days, there will be an increase in the hardening of the hearts for many, many people. One thing that I do not want in my life is a hardened heart, a heart that is insensitive to God's Word, a heart that doesn't care about the Gospel or care to be obedient to God's Word. Pray for the grace to keep your heart with all diligence. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. This call to vigilance and watchfulness is as relevant for us today as it was for the disciples when Jesus spoke these words. Just as a vigilant watchman remains attentive to potential threats, we must stay alert and watchful for the signs of Christ's imminent return. The fascinating thing about a watchman is that a watchman has many different roles which are all just as vitally important. In the olden days, a watchman was responsible for protecting towns and army camps from surprise enemy attacks as well as any other potential dangers. Watchmen on the walls would look out for approaching messengers, danger, armies, or envoys. In 2 Samuel 18, we're told that David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate, to the wall, lifted his eyes and looked, and there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king, and the king said, if he is alone, there is news in his mouth. And he, the messenger, came rapidly and drew near. It's a watchman's job to always be on the lookout, to peer into the distance, to observe, 
to await and certainly to be alert. The watchman stands as a sentinel, guarding against any dangers. And in our own spiritual lives, every Christian has this role of acting as a watchman. We are to observe, evaluate, and examine our lives against the Word of God. We are to guard the gates of our eyes, ears, and heart from the threat of sin, the threat of evil, and the threat of the devil. We are to be watchmen over our heart's desires and affections. Now, as children of God who live in a period of time where there is great uncertainty, one thing we have to guard against is the spirit of fear. People out there are fearful of so many things. The threat of emerging pandemics, for some, there is uncertainty when it comes to the current state of international affairs. The Bible warns us of wars and rumors of wars, and when we finally see Bible prophecy unfolding right before our eyes, it can leave us seeking clarity. And you can end up asking questions like, how will this affect the country I live in? How will this affect the world? And so there is uncertainty there. For someone else, the fight they face is economic uncertainty either personal finances or the wider economy of their country. For other people in certain parts of the world, Christians who face persecution for their faith in Christ, there may be some uncertainty as they think, how long can I endure this? Or how much more should I endure, Lord? And I personally believe that in these last days, in these days where we see Bible prophecy unfolding before our eyes, I believe the Bible gives us five commands that will help us all in these times. The first of these five commands is to keep watch because Christ is coming soon. Matthew 24, verse 42, the Bible says, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. When you are living in uncertain times, when you are living in fearful times, in times where biblical prophecy is happening and we are seeing an increase in the number of conflicts all around the world, we are seeing pestilences, we're seeing the love of many growing cold. When you are living in such times, it's important to keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. We may not have the answers to everything. There may not be a detailed roadmap telling you what to do and how to do it whenever you see troubling things happening. But all in all, we must remember that ultimately, our focus should be in one place, and that is on Jesus Christ. If you focus on the world, you will be worried, you will be burdened and anxious. But when you focus on Jesus, you will see the trouble in the world, but you will not be troubled in your heart. The second command is to watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Matthew 26 verse 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We are encouraged to watch and pray so that we won't give in to temptation. And a lot of times, people associate temptation to only be of a sexual nature. However, people can be tempted by sin in various ways. Some are tempted to lie and steal, all for their personal and selfish gain. Some are tempted to get drunk. Others are tempted to gossip. But most of all, watch out against being tempted to follow a gospel that tickles your ears. In the last days, there will be deception, and this deception will be tempting to many because you will be told a gospel that simply makes you feel good instead of leading you to repentance. Be careful not to be tempted. The third command is to watch and pray so that you can escape. Luke 21 verse 36 says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. When Jesus said this to his disciples, he was talking about the future and he was warning them of the terrible things to come on the earth as we edge closer to the end of the age. Those who will be counted worthy to escape God's wrath on this earth are those who have put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. But you can only do this if you watch and pray always. In other words, Jesus is telling us to be focused on Him. The fourth command to believers in this day and age is to be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. The Bible in 1 Peter 4 verse 7 says, 
The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. In this context, sober means serious. In other words, as believers, we should be careful about how we live. Our choices impact our ability to think clearly. It is better to be self-controlled so that we can pray earnestly. I believe here that Peter is also speaking to those who suffer for Jesus' sake, the believers who are persecuted. And Peter gives us a word of warning that is also encouraging as he says, it's almost over. The end of all things is near. And don't we see that today more so than ever? The fifth and final command to believers is to be clear in your mission. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 gives us great advice when it comes to dealing with all that we hear and see in the world today. The Bible says, But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. The world has many different voices, some godly, some ungodly. And these voices will tell you so many different things, things that will confuse you, things that will leave you perplexed, things that will pollute your mind, and all of this leads you to live in a fearful state. But God's Word is calling us to have a clear mind in every situation, and I believe that you can achieve this by doing one thing, focusing on Christ and doing everything for His glory. As more and more people ask questions like, are we living in the last days? Is this the end? I want to encourage you to do something. Rather than look at each and every event that is currently happening in the world, my message to you is that you should make sure that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, it's good for us to take note of the events happening in this world, but the focus for our lives should be to make sure that our individual relationships with God are in good standing. Whether these are the last days or not, whether this is the eleventh hour or not, you and I, as believers, need to make sure that our focus is only on Jesus Christ. We should focus on the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ who explicitly said no one comes to the Father except through me. When God is trying to get your attention, I believe that there are clear signs that you should look out for. So, the first sign that God is trying to get your attention is that His Word or a particular passage of Scripture will convict you more so than usual. A man sat in his office one day with his head in his hands and on both sides of the table he had huge mountains of paperwork. As he sat there, feeling overwhelmed, he opened his Bible and as he was reading, he came across Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, which says, Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. He felt his soul jump when he read this, and this passage of Scripture was literally burning in his eyes. He couldn't move on from that verse. And throughout that day, it was all he could think of. One day went by, another day went by, and he was replaying this scripture over and over again until finally one day in his living room, he broke down. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for all that I have done. I'm so sorry that I have been unfaithful to you and grieved you with my disobedience. This man was overcome with sorrow, all because of this one verse and the Holy Spirit working in his heart. All he could do was sob uncontrollably and ask for forgiveness. He told his wife what had happened that night. She encouraged him and assured him this was the work of the Holy Spirit. A couple of days later, he was traveling to work. In his heart, he was rejoicing and singing along to a gospel tape he was playing. But suddenly, tragedy struck. 
as traffic abruptly came to a standstill on the highway. A truck going 70 miles per hour slammed right into the back of his car, and this man died instantly. When his wife and friends and loved ones gathered together to lay him to rest, the wife said he was taken too soon for her liking, but ultimately God is in control and not her. And then she went on to say that the reason she had the strength to stand and smile while she was still in mourning is because God, in his goodness, God, in his mercy, convicted the heart of her husband to repent, and he listened. God, in his love, gave him a warning, and he listened. Yes, it hurts that he is no longer here, but it's a great comfort to know that his heart was rededicated and committed to the Lord only a couple of days earlier. Friend, we may not have such an experience, but I guarantee you that at some point in your life, there has been or there will be a passage in Scripture that will tear your heart open and convict you. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's Word can literally cut right through the sin in your life and get to the deepest parts of your heart, telling you to repent. What is God's Word convicting you of? Is it prayerlessness? Is God's Word convicting you about lying? Is God's Word convicting you of the pride in your life? Or is God's Word convicting you of sexual immorality? Whatever it is that you may be convicted of, listen. Do not harden your heart. Be quick to obey. The beauty about God's Word is that it literally exposes you, the real you. God's Word tells you about the company you keep, and it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. God's Word tells the man who thinks that just because he has not physically been unfaithful to his wife, he has done no wrong. No, God's Word addresses that and says, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The Word of God exposes everything. To those who think they are spiritually strong and mighty, it tells them to take heed lest you fall if you think you stand strong. To those who do things so they can be seen, to those who pray in front of others so that they can show off their knowledge and vocabulary, the Bible tells them, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. There is absolutely nothing that the Bible doesn't shed light on in one way or another. And so I believe that if you're looking for what God is saying to you today, open your heart to the Holy Spirit and then open your Bible. Meditate on it day and night and you will see how the scriptures will come alive. The Bible is clear about many things. It's clear that God is a jealous God and we are not to have any idols. The Bible is clear that Jesus Christ died on a cross and rose again. The Bible makes it clear that there is a heaven and there is a hell. The Bible also makes it clear that there is a day of judgment to come. But one of the things that the Bible tells us to do is to acquire knowledge. Proverbs 18 verse 15 says, An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Think about what this verse is saying. Those who are intelligent, those who are prudent and discerning, they seek to acquire knowledge. But why? Why is knowledge so important? Well, 
Hosea 4 verse 6 in the New King James Version says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Saints, we need knowledge concerning the authority that we have in Jesus. Because when you lack this knowledge, there's no way that you can walk in dominion. There is no way you can walk in victory because you would have no knowledge of who you are in Christ. We need knowledge and wisdom because a lack of knowledge can result in you being deceived. The Bible tells us that even the devil transforms himself into an angel of light. People with a lack of knowledge will see signs and wonders and think that it's a move of God, not knowing that the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 in the Amplified Translation, the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless one, is through the activity of Satan, attended with great power, all kinds of counterfeit miracles and deceptive signs and false wonders, all of them lies. When you have a lack of knowledge, you will believe anything and everything. You'll follow any doctrine, accept any teaching, and be drawn by any miraculous sign. However, to guard yourself against this, the Bible says in Proverbs 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Saints, in order to gain knowledge, you have to invest time. You have to invest effort in seeking the Lord. You have to seek Him in prayer. You have to seek Him in His Word. I believe that there are things, there are lessons and deep revelations that God can only reveal to you once you begin to chase Him with an intensity. Once you commit yourself to seeking the Lord and seeking His presence, God will show up. 